Order County Commissioner now in session will have the prayer following with the pledge. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just ask you this morning to keep your hands on the County Commissioner, all the seafood workers, our county workers, Lord, we just ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Approve of the minutes. So, so moved. moved. Second. Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carried. Payment of the bills? So moved. Second. Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, all opposed? Motion carried. Department head reports. Howard Neighbors. Good morning, Commissioner. How y'all doing? Right. I just got a couple of albums on all the rain and stuff we had. A lot of bad roads and stuff, so we're going back through the county grading. And, and every time we get a lot of rain, it beats the roads and stuff out. So, in our last board meeting, we give Gary on his uh, time that he needed for his medical leave, and but he come back to work as of yesterday, so he's back at work. Okay. I'm glad. He's yeah. Anything for Howard? I do. I've got one item. Um, Michael, if you don't mind, I'll get you to stand up too. Uh, we've been having an issue out there with the a drainage ditch out there in the Lenark area, Lenark Village area, off of Heffernan. That's by the post office. Howard, do you know where that is? Yes, ma'am. Um, and from what I understand, we're not making any headway on it. And so, because you have to maintain the ditch mm -hmm. because it's part of the sewer, I mean, not the sewer, but it's part of the uh, drainage system out there at Lenart. Um, Michael, I'm going to direct you and Michael Schuler to get together with um, the owners of the property, which is the Butlers, and also the uh, complaining adjacent neighbors, and see if you can't reach some kind of a settlement, because we've already had, like in the past two weeks, like 10 inches of rain, and if this ditch is not uh, cleaned out, we will have some pro serious problems People. backing up with water backing up. People flood. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree with me, Howard? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to make that in the form of a motion and um, and see if I got a second on it. I'll second. I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Uh, uh, all opposed? Motion carries. The reason why I'm doing it by motion is because we, I want you to report back to me and get something settled with that, and we don't need to keep on uh, going down the road without something being done about it, because this has been going on for about two years now, a year, at least a year and a half, so um, two years. So. And I know we've maintained it there for years and years, even with Mr. Prentice. And you have the and you have the documented records from it also. We got some, okay. some we couldn't find, some we did. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. That's thank you so much, Howard. Right. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Speaking of uh, Howard and ditches, I want to thank him for the work he did at the one in in Apalachicola, right in front of Mrs. Uh, yeah, right in front of the Coon Yeah. Oh, yeah, tremendously. There's actually no flooding now. They did an excellent job. Yeah, it turned out good. No, no more problem there so far. Anybody else have anything for Howard? Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Finder Davis, Solid Waste. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, just like to, if you would, grant the request from waste management of the CPI increase. Um, a two dollar and fifty seven cent increase that they was wanting. They want to go up to two fifty seven, right? That's correct. How much they paying that for? What that'll make be? What that make total? Uh, we pay them now fifty seven dollars and ninety five cent to dispose, get rid of the household garbage. With the two fifty seven, we bring it up to uh, sixty dollars and fifty two cent. We currently charge sixty-five dollars a ton. Come across the scale. So we'll move. I have a motion. I hear a second. Second. I have a motion. Second. On the floor. All in favor. Uh -huh. All opposed. Motion carries. Also, I'd like to ask the, the commissioners to consider uh, increasing the tipping fee for the CND. 
uh, tremendous amount is coming in, and uh, we, space is limited, and we are the uh, lowest charging county in the area, surrounding areas. We only charging forty five dollars a ton, and, and the surrounding areas are getting as high as higher seventy dollars a ton. So and how much is ours? Forty five. Okay. How much did you want to increase it? I'd like to move it up at least to 55. To 55. 10 dollars yes. Well, what CND is our problem here in the county. And, uh, and I'll, yeah. When you plan on doing that? What well, do you want to do? Just give the public enough time to you know, that they are. See the increase, let them know that it's coming. So um, maybe within six months. I'll make a motion that we go ahead and allow you to increase the, the charges that on the CND, the commercial, uh, yeah, uh, debris stuff. So. Second discussion. Yes, sir. Oh, what fund, if you will, run it by the public for putting it, I mean, we, we get in a motion to do it, but put it out there so the people know it's coming. Okay. Put it in the papers or however y'all do it over the radio. That way they'll know it's coming. Okay. There won't be no, won't be no word of minute. Right? Be no surprise to them. Right. Okay. <clears throat> well, a little bit more discussion yes, on it too. And we need to monitor this with going up on the rates. We need to monitor the CND to make sure that we don't get additional dumping on the sides of the road worse than what we have. Yes, ma'am. So let's do that. And okay. because this is what we're trying to remedy, trying to keep from them dumping so much on the side of the road because the, the CND is the worst part of the dumping right. uh, on the sides of the road. And, um, but I, I know if, if surrounding areas are 70 and we're still at 45, there does need to be an increase in there more than likely, but I just want to monitor it and make sure we don't have any more roadside trash than what we normally have. Right. Because it's pretty bad now. That's it is. We have a lot of them coming from other places to find us bring it because it's so cheap. That's, that's correct, Commissioner. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, we ask if they come from out of the county, but they tell us no, you know, yeah. really can't prove it, but uh, I agree with you. Yeah, I see and, one other day coming. Yeah. Over there was coming out of the county, a truckload of it. Right. I have a question too, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, is this um, something that normally would happen during the budget process as far as raising fees? Or is it something that we do just when it comes to Not necessarily. Well, no, no. It's just when he sees fit that he. We haven't had an increase on that in years. Okay. Yes. Mr. Curtis. Well, just give one question. <laughs> if if uh, if if you, like if you catch them from coming out of county, what y'all what 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 what, what y'all do on that? Oh, we could charge them out of county right now. You know, it's I have to look back in the, and see what I know for household garbage. This is a higher rate for out of the county, but for C and D, that's something I guess we need to set. Well, let let, uh, let me amend, amend my motion to to reflect that to look into. The possibility of, of having in county people and out of county people, and I mean, the other counties do that too. So, okay. Yeah. So. Um, Second. So. Yeah. So I'm in my motion to reflect that. I have a motion. Yes, sir. Could you just define what C and D is for the public? Construction and demolition. Yes. Hopefully. Uh, with the new litter ordinance coming out, that would slow up some of the construction and demolition being dumped on the side of the road. That's that's where our problem is, though. Yes. We can get these contractors in from other counties that come in here and just leave their stuff on the side of the road. Yes. And we got to stop that. Yeah, it's a mess. Okay. Have a motion to second the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Anything else for funding? That's it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. All right. Good, good work. Is Pat O'Brien there? <clears throat>
Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. I have um, three action items this morning. Uh, request the board's approval to open the bids for the RFQ monitoring, for debris monitoring. So moved. Second. I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. You yeah, know, this is not really bids, these are qualifications. There's no, there's no <coughs> money shown on this. And so what I have, which you have listed there, the project that people have, that we know have submitted because they have the names on the outside of the box. The bottom line is blank because there's another, there's a sixth applicant, but we don't know who it is that they didn't write the outside of the box. There's a note to these this morning. Uh, Pam doesn't have her glasses, so, so she doesn't <laughs> stab herself. I will. And I think they're in the order here, so this first one should be uh, Tetra Tet. Tet. <coughs> I'm glad you're doing it. <laughs> I did. I'm going to put that on. No. <laughs> okay, Tetra Tech here. Uh, what, what it is in here is really a, a, a manual here that uh, Pam, will, Pam and her committee yes. will review. There are three of them here with, with the board request. There's not any money involved. There's no bond associated. There's just qualifications. <clears throat> and then Pam will come back and select the one that's the most qualified for our needs. First one is Tetra Tech. Second one is Volk Curves. I mean, look in the Oh, okay. Well, right, the next one we open is, is Whit O'Brien. So Whit O'Brien. So, so we haven't found uh, Volk yet. Which one is Volk? Well, it doesn't matter. We're open all. Volk Curves. Volk Curves. Okay. So, uh, well, I'm opening up Tetra Tech right now. Second one This is Whit O'Brien's again, same deal. Three copies. Uh, for All right, here's Volker. Uh, we already got that opened up. This qualification. The next one then is Thompson Consulting. Should we open up Thompson Consulting? We got three copies there. The next one then should be Landfall Strategy. Landfall Strategies. Austin, the last one we all know, and Michael will be out here Austin. Right. And the last one would be ER Assist. ER Assist is the last one we submitted, so it's like ER Assist, that bottom one. And they are out of, <coughs> uh, let's see here. Excuse me. She'd be on the first one. Uh, Oh, Tyler Proxy, Tyler Hatley, they have Tyler Hatley office. Yeah. We don't have nobody in this area do this. Yes, sir. This, this is not debris pickup. This is debris monitoring. This is debris monitoring. I make a motion that we turn it over to Pam and her committee to come back with a, a recommendation. Second. Have a motion second for all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> motion carries. My second action item is request the board's approval for us to go out for the RFQ for contractual uh, services for the SHISCAP grant for the physical year uh, 2016 in the amount of 11000 That's for exercise and training. So moved. Second. I have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Um, Third action item is actually requesting the uh, board's approval of the amendment for the contract for the residential construction mitigation program, that grant that we have, uh, for an additional monies of $8,000 from the state in order to finish up uh, one of the homes. And hopefully um, there's some counties that are turning back in their money, so there should be some more residual money coming that hopefully that we can get uh, that last house that we have in Holden. So moved. Second. 
Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. That's it, Ms. Pam. That's it. Anybody got anything, Pam? Just one item. Uh, we are having, <coughs> we are starting to see water coming down from the O'Clockney. You so, get my emails? Yeah, I got your emails on, on the phone. Okay, we we posted it yesterday on Facebook, um, on our website, and we also, when we put it out there, instructed all uh, the people living like Rio Vista, Hickory Hammock, all of those areas. If yeah. they'll go there and sign up and we put the email address for the corn hydro they'll actually get those warnings from them um i talked to somebody <coughs> that went by the dam on sunday tapping dam up there on 20 on sunday and they said the water was coming out of the spillway then they've got yeah. three gates open at 100 yeah. percent. so that's it's gonna be it's gonna be a slower mover slow moving thing so. yeah we got water both sides no reminds no. me of spring 2009 I know, when well, I was just stranded every night. But I've never <laughs> seen that. I've never, never. As long. But anyway, thank you for keeping me up, David. You're welcome. Thank you, Pam. Right. Eric Lovestrand. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. I wanted to um, let you know that we finished our recruitment process for our vacant extension office position and um, actually extended interview invitations to 10 of the applicants that we had and talked face to face with eight of those folks and met some very nice people and I very much appreciated all the time that they put into the process to be involved with us in that. Um, there was one candidate though that stood out as having a very strong suite of um, skills and talents that seemed to be a really good fit for the extension program here in the county and her name is Michelle Allen Huber um, had a typo on her name on that report that you have. There's no T on the end. It's H-U-B-E-R. Michelle is actually related to one of our local radio station personalities. She's Michael Allen's sister. Mm -hmm. And Michelle grew up in the community as a youngster and then was actually um, in Europe for several years and has been back in the community here for quite a few years as well, raising her children here and has a really strong set of office management skills. Um, came with great recommendations from her former supervisors that I talked with directly and has also been using the budget tracking software that we utilize in the extension program. She's got good experience with organizing and managing several different kinds of events and activities and former jobs too that will be of great benefit to us as we um, kind of get moved into our new facility and have the opportunity to really expand some of our extension program offerings down there. So I think she will be able to step right in where Jamie left off as soon as she gets her feet on the ground regarding logistics for county policies and university policies. She's very familiar with all of the tasks that we need her to work on, I believe. Um, speaking of the facility, um, things are moving forward slowly, much slower than I would like to see as the occupant that will be moving in there. But that's just the process when it comes to these large projects with the university facilities people. And um, I met with the environmental health inspector down there last Friday, so I know things are still moving on the process. Um, he's the one that comes in and does inspections before they actually start any demolition, just to make sure that there are not um, areas in the building that might contain asbestos and things like that. But he didn't anticipate any problem because that building was new enough to not have used any of those materials likely. Um, so they're still at the stage where they're putting out the project for cost estimates from contractors and we'll move forward as they get into that. That's all I have for you today unless you have questions about something else from the report that we submitted. <coughs> Anybody have thank Eric? Thank you, right. Eric. Thank you very much. Kurt Blair, he's running late. Did that come back to him? Mm -hmm. Mr. Barbara Sanders. Good morning, Commission, and thank you for uh, putting this issue on the agenda. I wanted to explain why I'm here and what I'm asking for. The board had this board had previously. Um, approved the school board's referendum uh, I believe back in December 
it's a statute that requires the school board if it changes um, the millage on the operating that would come before the commission when you approved that we had set the date for March 15th for the election we determined it was not possible to have our ducks in a row for education etc so the board the school board amended the uh, resolution and set the date for June the 7th um, I think the board this board's original approval is all we needed but to be sure because the supervisor of elections had raised a question about it we're back here asking you to reapprove the referendum with the June 7 date I do also sir. question yes sir as I recall when the uh, motion came up initially uh, you couldn't do it at the primary or the general because you had time uh, we funding. needed to get it done by July 1 okay so we can budget that's correct now I will say there's um, at our school board meeting yesterday a city a gr group of citizens came to the school board and asked that they reconsider how the election is going to be done they also want the date to be reconsidered and that's going to be determined at a special meeting tomorrow is Wednesday yes uh, so if the board if the school board changes its mind a third time I'll be back here again do we really but, well but if you're gonna have that miss Barbara I'm, I'll ask our attorney do we need to take it up if there's a possibility that they may be coming back to us for a third time well we think you need to and I'll let Mike talk but let me tell you why the supervisor of elections has a deadline of Friday this Friday to, yeah. to get her document or her materials to yeah. the printers etc so that's why the school board said its special meeting for tonight was so if it changes its mind it can tell the supervisor before Friday but if we don't change our mind I need y'all's action today so I can tell the supervisor Friday mm. but if if the board if the school board tonight says that they are not going forward for whatever reason either on the the general we'll come back to you okay all right. yes, Commissioner the, uh, of course it's up to the board whether you grant this approval or not my recommendation is they've made a request of you that you should take action on their request this mm -hmm. morning as the board sees fit but I do think you should take action because you've been requested to at this time and from what I've heard it doesn't sound like there's, there's you know sufficient facts to table this issue until a later date so I would recommend that you take action this morning okay what well, is there can I amend the motion to I mean whatever they if they got to do it by July 1 and you proposed uh, July I mean June 7th correct what would you do put it off a week or something I mean you still got to uh, July 1 exactly uh, no no it's the methodology I, well the date might change and that's an issue but the methodology of conducting the election the supervisor of elections I believe has suggested a methodology that's cheaper which is the mail out ballots which is how they did it on St. George Island uh, and maybe all over the county for the MSBU I'm really it not was countywide countywide mail out ballot for the MSBU change so that's alligator point in St. George alligator point in St. George all I know is it the wasn't countywide right, it was just those two districts, yeah, just okay. those two districts. <laughs> my knowledge of that is as a citizen and I was on the island so I didn't know what the areas covered but regardless um so those are some of the decisions that the board will be listening to at its meeting tomorrow but regardless if this board today says yes go forth uh, and that changes on Wednesday then the school board simply wouldn't go forward and I would come back to you again but I need your action today because if they stay with the amended resolution date of June 7th and the regular walk-in ballot uh, or election then the supervisor has to know by Friday Ms. Ms. Chair may I ask a question yes, sir. if you were to change the date of the election when, when would the latest time I'm trying to get more information for the board but it sounds like the board is inclined to have more of a blanket approval oh so yeah get more information in terms of if the methodology changes it's either going to be a, a uh, mail-in ballot or it's going to be a live election the date will, will what, what would be the latest date that you would have the election if the date changes from June 7th the options 
I understand what you're saying to do a blanket approval to save me from coming back. I would appreciate that. That's what I was looking for. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Then what I would say as a blanket approval as the school board determines in the election year 2016, because theoretically they could go all the way to November 7 or whatever the general election is this year, theoretically. Okay. And you would be satisfied with that as their council? Yes, as a 2016 election year okay. approval. Thank I, I'm you. comfortable recommending to the board that if you're inclined to give a blanket approval that you give them the blanket approval as has been uh, discussed by the school board's attorney here this morning. I'll make my motion to reflect that. Thank you, I'll Mr. Cash. Thank you, Mr. Lockley. Comment? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to vote for the motion, but I would prefer uh, an election occurring with a normally scheduled election. I think the turnout is better. Uh, I'm intrigued by the prospect of mail-in ballot. I think that's certainly uh, something to look into. Um, but uh, the cost of uh, election on one issue, you probably won't get much uh, uh, participation, especially if it's not a mail-in. Um, and then that cost could be avoided too. I'll convey that to my board on Wednesday. All right, we have a motion to second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. All opposed? Motion carries. I really thank you guys. Yes, Bye. Right. <clears throat> you can go ahead with Kim. Is the chairman Kim? Kim, yeah. my name? I'm going to give uh, Kurt a call to see what he does. Okay. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, I'm here today because we have a plan that the state requires us to write. We usually write it about every four years, but every now and then they'll hit us up two years into the process. One of the guiding laws that funds a lot of the training that we do for people is the Workforce Investment and Opportunity Act. And because that law changed at the federal level, it required us to rewrite the state plan that we have that's due to the state. Um, in that plan, it is required that our county commissioners review the plan and sign off on it. It's basically an overview of a lot of the processes we use, who we serve, how we do it, how we comply with federal and state laws. Um, it, it would probably put most people to sleep if they read it at night when they were getting ready to go to bed. But we, we are very used to writing it. It's something that's been in the work for the 24 years that I've, I've been involved with these programs. So it's nothing new. Um, and so you have that before you today. The other thing that you have is an interlocal or a chief elected officials agreement. And that agreement has also been updated to comply with the new law. It talks about um, the responsibilities and the roles between workforce development areas, or work, we call them workforce boards, but in the new law you will hear them referred to as workforce development areas, and um, county commissions, local elected officials, as well as in our case Gulf Coast State College because they are the fiscal agent for the operations of our board. We're a little different in that respect. We're the only board in the state of Florida that has a, a state college as its fiscal agent. It was a strong partnership from the beginning of our board. Um, I think there were 13 other boards across the state that started out that way and they've all sort of fallen by the wayside. But our partnership remains strong with the college so that's worked well for us. Um, and I think if, if you read this document or if you've had a chance to look through it, um, the most important piece of it, I think, for county commissioners to know is that you make every appointment that's made to our board uh, and that by federal law, the county commissions are the entity that is the oversight as well as the um, entity that's responsible for our spending. So if, if we had um, a case where we went out and we spent some funds in a way that wasn't legal, the feds would hold the county commissions uh, responsible for those funds. You've never paid a lot of attention to that because we've never had any kind of disallowed costs and we certainly don't plan on having any disallowed costs in the future. We've been very good stewards of our funds. We have very clean audits. Um, so we've never had any issues with that. But those are probably the two most important things I would think from your perspective that you would want to know about that interlocal agreement. I'm happy to answer any questions. The, the plan, I think, has ended up being 
70 pages long, which is way too long in my opinion, but it sort of took that many pages to get everything that the state required of us. And I'd also be happy to give you an update. I know that, um, as you know, for years since 2012, we've been working with the community and providing some shelling oversight and shelling programs, as well as some training programs um, for people that have been displaced because of the, the Bay failure. Um, I think we've run our last round of shelling to date. Uh, there may be a couple of days of money left there. DAX and DEO are trying to sort that out right now. Um, and I think that going forward, we'll probably see DAX contract directly with either the Seafood Workers Association, the city, or some other entity um, within Franklin County, which would make sense. That's the way they've operated shelling in the past. I do know that in the um, new budget at the state level that there is a, a little over a half a million dollars appropriated for shelling. I'm not sure if that's hand shelling and barge shelling or one or the other, but there are dollars there um, that are available. I'm sure that we'll be hearing more about that as the budget goes into to place. Um, we do continue to do training with individuals. We are continuing to operate um, in addition to the school system, a GED program that's been successful with very low numbers. I think it, to date we have about five people enrolled. We would love to see more people enrolled in that, but we also understand that um, going back to school as an adult when you're also trying to work is, is sort of a, a, a big challenge. But we continue to work with those who come and we've had good success with that. I will be coming before you again probably around August, September to give you an overview of what we've done throughout the year, the success we've had, how many people have been placed, what their wages at placement are, and also how we're moving forward with what's left of the Commerce Grant in terms of training and providing services to people who need um, skills so that they can make that transition from one type of living to another. Any questions? Kim, I do. Uh, so okay. you need the board to approve the, the plan and the interlocal? Yes. Commissioner, I, I honestly had to have a chance to send it to Attorney Schuller, so if you do uh, do approval, I would ask that you do a contingent in his review of both, because it's, it's a lot of pages. Kim, it's, it it's is. 70. Yeah. It, it was amazing. The, the package itself is almost all the stuff you guys sent. Mm -hmm. was, and, and the interlocal that I have is the updated one I got. Yes. Donna yesterday, so yes. I did. I was able to update that. Absolutely. But I do recommend that you let give us. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve this on the contingent on the attorney's recommendation back. Second. Have a motion second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. Just to give an update on something again that you mentioned. Uh, this is something that uh, last meeting we'd given you a list of projects that were that were in the funding range from various sources of BP money. There's an additional project, and you may know about it, uh, that is that is proposed by the state of Florida. This is some 3.9 million dollars that is proposed for additional shelling uh, in the Appalachian Coal Bay area. Now it, that we they did the first category or the first uh, funding deal was $700,000, which I think you participated in, and I don't know which project it was, but I want the board to know, the public to know, there's a proposed second project of $3.9 million that uh, is sometime in the future. Now, that no one seems to know exactly when that is. The state of Florida is looking at another much larger funding program for the Appalachian Gold Bank, $3.9 million. I, I will have to say I'm, I'm not as able to track all of the right. projects no, under Restore as I wish I were. But you know, there's so many of them, and there's so many different pots of funding under Restore. It can be a little bit confusing. I know that there's been, and, and something that I would say, I know that there's been um, some research that's being conducted for both the barge shelling and the hand shelling, where they're actually diving all sites and talking about what sites are doing best. I would, I would think that it would be important for the county commissioners to get that report from the SMART group when it's available. I'm interested in looking at that data myself um, because I think we all want to know what works best so that those are the practices we can continue. Because there is, over time, there's been quite a bit of money, you know, put into this and as good stewards of those dollars, we certainly want to know where we're getting the most bang for our buck. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. I look forward to your report. Uh, I know that it is uh, 
a lot of different programs and I would be interested to see the success of the programs and the participation. Thank you. I do know we have one young man going to work this Friday. He unfortunately will be leaving Florida. He'll be going to South Carolina as a welder making $32 an hour. So we're very pleased that that training and that individual have been able to really find something that suits them well and they're good at it and can make a good living. But, but I will be happy to provide the report. It's some of the things we like the most is being able to provide the outcomes. Thank you. Thank you.